Welcome back to the channel. And today I just wanted to talk about something that is kind of getting bigger in the filmmaking world. Um, and that's shooting anamorphic. I just feel like every three, four, five, six months, there's a new um, anamorphic lens coming out and it's starting to become um, very popular with everybody shooting because, you know, it's actually very easy now to shoot anamorphic as to where it was, I would say three, four years ago, where most of these newer Sony cameras didn't really shoot anamorphic. Um, but now with the new update that just came out with um, on the FX3, uh, FX6, I believe, and I'm not too sure about the FX9, where we can do a two time squeeze. You know, this anamorphic option on, in my, in my situation, the FX3, which I have right here, doesn't really do anything for us when we are trying to shoot anamorphic. Um, when we have the two times anamorphic option turned on, it's really only displaying what we're supposed to be seeing and our final outcome. Um, because when we bring this footage into Resolve or Premiere, uh, what you're going to see is just like your proper normal format with maybe vignetting, depending on what type of lens you're using. Now I'm using the Lau Proteus 45mm T2 Amber Flare. This is going to be a quick little demonstration that, you know, one of these shots I have the anamorphic um, option turned on and one of them I don't. So it's really not even doing anything to our footage. We actually have to go into Resolve and go into the clip attributes and actually turn on uh, two times anamorphic to display our proper two times anamorphic look. Um, you are gonna be getting a lot of vignetting. Now what I do in my situation, I zoom in to my image until I don't see any more vignetting. So what I would do is on the FX3 or in my situation, what I have done was to zoom in on the footage until there's no more vignetting and then that's pretty much it. I just wanted to come on here and just kind of educate people who are interested in picking up the FX3 because of the anamorphic update or for those that want to shoot anamorphic on the FX3. Um, basically, long story short is that it doesn't really shoot anamorphic, it just displays it. Now you can be doing the same thing on a monitor. So I just wanted to give you guys a heads up. But besides that point, this camera is great. I would still shoot anamorphic. The clips that I've been showing over this video, that was all shot on this and I did zoom in on the clips. I'm not too sure on how much I did zoom in, but I just zoomed in enough to get rid of that big netting that was around the sensor. So if you guys are out there wanting to purchase the FX3 and want to shoot anamorphic on the newer Sony cameras, I would 100% do it. My first time of shooting anamorphic on the FX3 was this boxing film that I shot uh, a few months ago. And um, I got to say the results were pretty great. Now, I wouldn't use this on the Komodo for certain situations, for example, like that, because it was very low lit. And my ISO was at 12,800 the entire film um, because this is only a T2. So now if you want to shoot low light, you do need something that is going to be able to shoot good in low light. So that's why I decided to choose uh, the FX3 over the Komodo. Um, and you know what they say, there's always a certain type of equipment made for certain jobs. Now I wouldn't say this anamorphic is good for all types of shooting, only because um, it is heavy. That's basically the only flaw that I think I have against this lens. The rail system underneath with the small rig lens holder on there just to protect the lens and the mount on the FX3. Um, but yeah, so that's it for today's video. If you guys have any questions regarding this anamorphic setup, let me know in the comments. Um, I would highly recommend picking up the Lawa. Besides the price point, it is worth it. So yeah, that's it for today's video. We will see you guys on the next one.